uh, when we started thinking about what we should be covering today, I think uh, the first one of the few things that we thought that we should talk about is not about what I've done in the past or what our business right now is, but being a startup myself, being an entrepreneur myself, uh, what worked well for us in the last couple of years when we rebranded this company and set it up again. And I think that has been one of the biggest, biggest, uh, I would say, tools that we have managed to use has been uh, social media. And uh, so we talk about social media today as what we are going to do uh, over the next hour or so. Now, I would assume that most people on this call have some degree of familiarity with the social media business. Uh, many of us are running business pages on social media. Social media essentially appeals to people like us, businessmen like us, essentially for some of the very interesting dimensions they have added to the business world today. First of all, it's very low cost, essentially. At an entry level, most of social media is free. We also get a lot of flexibility through social media where we can broadcast our strengths. We can tell the world who we are without actually using any call center or any billboard outside or something like that. We are very targeted. We can talk to the right people. If we are smart, and some things that we are going to discuss today are going to cover that, we can know exactly who to talk to and who we shouldn't. We can therefore also expect real live feedback. Very, very essential if you're especially marketing a product or a service or taking it to the market, you will realize that it's important that we get to know what the world is thinking about us. It helps us find new customers, again, covered earlier. And finally, it allows us to learn from our competitors. Social media makes us visit, gets us to visit competitor websites, competitor pages, which is not something that we can do very easily. So at least as an overview, we can see what our competitors are doing and learn from that. So why do we cover LinkedIn today? Well, you would probably be seeing the slides. It's not the only social media out there, but it's only in my opinion, the most powerful, the world's largest professional network. Here we are not there to share jokes. We are not there to share pictures and so on and so forth. This is where you're there because of a reason. And the reason is to network for your business. So professional connections is what we are looking at. There are very strict rules, something we will cover. There are strong tools in analytics. Again, it's something that we need to master. I may not be able to cover it due to the paucity of time today, but we will definitely touch upon that. And it allows you, something that I mentioned already, free branding, promotion, and business development. Something that, when it goes to the targeted customer, customer group, it's a very, very strong tool. Some numbers about social media, or rather LinkedIn. I think the number here that I would focus on is the one that's second from the bottom. Imagine a world where you're trying to figure out who you should be contacting. Whether you've developed this fantastic app, or you've developed a product, or something. Our biggest challenge as marketing professionals or as entrepreneurs is to know where is my customer. In a very crowded marketplace, it gets very difficult. Here we know that those guys are actually looking for us and coming on board. This is what makes a tool like LinkedIn invaluable. It has the ability to cut through clutter like nobody else. Now, LinkedIn has been there for quite some time and LinkedIn experts are also not uncommon to find. There are many books, many tools available in the market which you can pick up and probably spend a few days reading through and understanding what, how LinkedIn can work. I'm assuming they're all great. I'm assuming because I haven't read a single one. The point is, I am not going to cover any book summary or I'm not going to talk about 42 rules or 53 rules or whatever. Because that is not to me very relevant here. In the next 20 minutes, I'm going to talk about what has worked for me. Why this has been a personal journey and why I want to share what's worked for me with you. Obviously, question would be, why would that matter? 
Well, this is where we are. I would like to focus on the second point here. That it is, we may have 5,000 plus connections, but what's important is that 95% is probably people we wanted to connect with or who wanted to connect with us on business reasons. The balance 5% would be our friends and family. You know, it's difficult to refuse your father-in-law if he reaches out to you. So, that's the balance 5%. And out of that, I would say 75% has been relevant to business. What that business is? Well, we are the world pioneers, probably, or at least the Asia-Pacific pioneer in art-based training, art-based people development, corporate training. So, about 5% are people who have found us or we have found them because they are either in HR or training and development or somehow linked to this business which is mutually beneficial. All right. Our profile gets viewed often and we have a lot of memberships and groups. What that means, we'll come to that. Very important facts out of this is almost 75% of our business development results come through our LinkedIn contacts. The balance comes through word of mouth, references, repeat business and so on and so forth. And I would say a fair share of that comes again starting through the same LinkedIn contact. All of this has happened in the last, plus, I would say about 14 months. And I'll tell you a bit more about that as I go along. And today I would say we have a turnover about uh, an almost an eight figure turnover based on a completely free membership. You might know LinkedIn offers premium memberships where you pay anything between 1,000 or 1,400 rupees a month. Now, that's an option for us. We can definitely go for it. But for reasons, we have chosen not to go for it because we haven't felt the need for it. The free membership, the basic level membership, has worked fine. Now, I'll tell you a little bit of a story about me. As Sneha introduced me, I spent about 16 or 17 odd years in sales and marketing in India, US, Europe. And I used to visit LinkedIn as often as I would update my bio data or my CV. That is when I'm looking for a job, etc. So there it was, a profile that had had some three, four hundred connections. And it used to languish and it used to get visited maybe once in a month, once in two months. But when I quit and about a year or so back when I decided to start this company, we realized that this is a very important tool and we needed to have a clear cut strategy about what will work here. And in that, we decided to approach it at a very step-by-step -step level. We wanted to tell the world who we were, what we do, and what we represent, the industry, the sector, the business, and so on and so forth. Most importantly, why were we cool? In other words, what was our USP in today's business? What's our competitive value in a crowded marketplace? Most critical. But more than that, and always more than that, and any of my colleagues here who's from sales or marketing would know, it is what the client is looking for. The what is in it for me question that he will ask when he looks at my profile. So, why should he come to me? So with that, we developed a roadmap. A roadmap which I'm going to share with you. Please understand that this is no gospel truth. This is no sacrosanct. 42 rules or tools or whatever. These are tips. These are stuff that's worked for us. Some of these might work for you. Some of these might not work for you. I'm assuming everybody who's on this call will be able to take those judgment calls. But these are fundamental stuff. Nothing hi-fi. Fundamental ways to develop a profile or develop a position in the LinkedIn universe of 150 million or people where you become somebody people would want to come and see. So I'm going to take the next 10 slides on each of these points that I'm now opening up. And they will talk about various tools that we have worked on over the last couple of years to develop our, link, develop our LinkedIn profile. A little bit of a caveat. Again, due to the time constraints that we have and due to the focus that we want to do, I'm going to give a common look at how we have developed our personal pages, our self pages, as well as the company page. I would like to also point out here, very clearly, that the company page, in my opinion, is a secondary destination. In some cases, if you're Procter & Gamble, 
or emphasis, maybe it is the biggest reason why people will come to you. But in my case, it is the fun act, fun things that we are doing on our personal pages that is getting people on board and diverting some of them to our company page. Now, it's a chicken and egg. What comes first? Well, it's an opinion and it should be judged through the prism of what works for you. In our case, we have developed individual pages which make our profiles interesting enough for people to then click on our company and end up visiting that. As I mentioned, if you are TCS, chances are the traffic might be double it. So let's talk about the first of those points that I raised, which is about developing a profile. Now, every slide that I'm going to now take you through are going to cover, will follow a simple structure. I'm going to talk about some fundamentals, I'm going to talk about some tools, and then I'm going to give you some tips about what we have done and what seems to have worked. So a profile should be honest. I cannot overemphasize on this, especially in a connected world like today. Be very, very careful about what you're presenting, simply because there could be others who know about it and could challenge you. I would like to keep it simple in, in language, in the way the formatting is done, the way the information is shared, and I would stick to a professional profile. What that is? Well, let's look at some of the tools that I would like to use in this. I would like to first start with what is it that my target contact is looking for. If he needs to come to me, and in my case, if he is a training manager or a learning manager or a HR manager in a company and he wants to find new ways of training his people, what would he be looking for? Typical sales pitch angle, guys, focus what the customer wants. It needs to be relevant to the business that we are in. Again, very simple. Anybody who's got a biodata would know this. If I am going to talk about a medical product practice, let's not go too deep into my tennis skills, for instance. The third point is very important, and I'll give you my example. As I mentioned, I spent some 16 years in sales and marketing before that. So my profile was automatically filled with my work-related stuff, credentials, achievements, uh, so on and so forth. Keywords that were all related to sales, relationship management, customer focus, customer service, so on and so forth. So when I shifted and I started off with this new business, which is in the training space, I realized that in the early few days or months, I was getting traffic which was still based on my older profile. I had a brand conflict. I was trying to not understand, I was actually not understanding that the brand that I had developed was getting traffic based on the past. So it's very essential that we focus on this and we know in our minds what is it that we are trying to drive through there. Are we talking about me, Anurban Bhattacharya, or I'm talking about a training company, whatever be the name. So the way I designed the profile has to focus on what is relevant to what the current goal of this profile is. The fourth point is about tone very simple. Again, I'll give you an example. Yesterday, last week, I read this profile which started with, yo dude. Now that's fine. That's fine if you're a rap musician, I guess. But if you're in the business of you know, making professional contacts, I'm not sure that approach would work. I'm not saying that you make it very officious and very formal and very up, stiff up flip, but make it acceptable. Whether it's formal or informal, will depend on your business and your position. Having said that, be sure that you talk about stories, be emotional, put in the exclamation marks, put in the wow words, make sure that people appreciate what you're doing and feel as excited as you are. Couple of points, remember to customize your URL, it's an option that you get, and always up your, update your skills and expertise, it helps searching easier. Line a very, very good opportunity. It's right up there, right after your name and your designation. It needs to be something that attracts attention. What should it essentially cover? Very simple. What do you do? What's the USP? And why on earth would somebody want to do business with you? What's the biggest advantage or benefit? And if you can handle it, this is another way to bring in an emotional trigger. Think about this. Take a minute to think if you have time. What can be an emotional trigger for your business? 
emotional trigger as to why would somebody want to come to you. Very simple step again, look around, look at other people, just try not to copy a photo. 30% more clicks when we search with keywords we get if we have a good picture. Alright, look at the last point here. It could be a professional photograph like a passport site photograph that we Indians have a penchant for or it could be something that you're doing. If you're a chef, while you're at work could be a great picture. My business is art based training, so my profile picture is when I'm actually painting in a program. Important that we avoid inconsistent images. In other words, if you're a doctor, try avoiding a picture which shows you swimming. Avoid blurred pictures or you know something cut out of a group or badly lit. And avoid visual inconsistencies. In other words, if I'm 40 and I am, I shouldn't put a picture which shows me a 23. Now sometimes, if you have a business across other social media like Facebook, etc., it might be useful to use your logo as a consistent image across social media. You can actually have a Facebook page of your company and the same image can be used on your LinkedIn. I'll leave the choice to you, depending on the profile of the business. But this is very, very important. I see a lot of people missing out on this. An update is something like a status message on Facebook. You can put a post, you can put something that's happening, the most recent, so on and so forth. It is free advertising for your business, guys. Don't let this chance go. And it also helps in building your credibility. What are the, some of the stuff we do? Latest industry updates, company events, but you know, be a bit discreet. Nobody wants to read about too much of self-praise. Sector updates and general interest items. For example, uh, recently Apple, uh, the iPhone had its fifth birthday and there were lots of posts. My post was about what Steve Ballmer had said about Apple five years ago that Apple uh, iPhones are going to completely fail. It brought in a lot of interest and brought in a lot of understanding of my sense of humor and awareness. Essentially, it's a great differentiator. Very simple. Think of what you would like to read and then post. Making connections. I think most people are on such, such media because they want to make connections. But the first point is the most critical. If five people or more who you have reached out say they don't know you or this is spam, your right to send out further invites get revoked to the extent it can be your, your account could be permanently uh, banned. So be careful of who you know and only reach out to those people. Oh, there are tricks. What are those? Let's look at people we already know. Let's look at email lists, etc. that we already have. Let's look at our business contacts who could be on Facebook. A very interesting way of doing this is if you have managed a connection, if you scroll down on the bottom right side, you will see people who searched for this profile also searched for and you will have 10 relevant people right there. See if you can reach out to any of them or you know any of them. The next one, groups. I will visit this in one of the subsequent slides. Always remember, it's not 5,000 people who matter. It's the 75% relevance that's critical. Very, very important little tool before I continue is that you must remember that the invitation you send must be a personalized message. I'd like to add you to my network is, chances are, is going to get a 50% rejection if the guy doesn't know you properly. Refer to why he knows you, why he should know you, what is in it for him to know you. Always, always, always customize this. If there is any one rule, I would suggest follow this. Recommendations, very important. This is like certifications and your peers telling the world how good you are. Sometimes it's important that we proactively send out recommendations for people. Or if somebody has recommended you, recommend the person back. It shows up on his page as who you are. So somebody visiting his page can actually find you. 
a little tip, but very, very effective. Please use professional language. That's a professional courtesy we all deserve in this world of business. Don't spam. I keep getting requests from people who I've never met saying I should recommend their work. I have no earthly clue what he does. He's that balance five percent, some friend of a friend or whatever. And I, I'm sorry, but I'm pretty brusque and sometimes very rude and tell the person that, listen, buddy, this is not the way it's done. I cannot recommend your services since I don't know what they are. Remember, spamming doesn't work in either direction. Groups. Excellent starting point. So imagine a scenario where you're new to a community. You've moved into a new town or you've moved into a new locality. One of the best ways to get to know people is to get into a club or get into the Resident Welfare Association. If you're a Bengali like me, you'll probably end up in a Durga Puja Pandal. Getting to know people. A group is a great place for relevant people, similar interest people to socialize in. Find the group, get in. Join and participate. And you can also, if you haven't got a strong offering, create your own group. We have our own group which in the last few months has hit for 300 people, all relevant. But, keep, but remember, you have to add value to that group, otherwise you get forgotten. But if you're in the group, it helps you locate people in the group and links back to your connections. Very important tool. What are the, some of the groups that you should be? I think it's a useful thing. So use the group directory, which is right there on top, next to your profile bar. And in your own group, if you have one, make sure you track the statistics. Very good way to find out who's visiting your page and who's not. Very, very important thing, links. Now, LinkedIn at the basic level allows you three links to outbound sites on your page. This could be a great promotion for your own website or your own blog. But my little tip to this is, you don't need to list it just as a website or a blog. List it is with something catchy. There is the option of other when you scroll down on that. And in that you will see, you can put it as anything. I, I brand my website as art-based business solutions or something, which gets a lot more for people to come through than when people are just looking at my page as the painted sky. So these are some of the things that you can put in. Many site could be your Facebook page that you can put into this. All right. High on visibility, it's right on top. So anybody who's scrolling down after the fourth or fifth line can click on it and get redirected to your own website. It's a great, great way to promote your business. And if you have blogs and so on and so forth, it's a great way to show off. A last couple of slides. Well, LinkedIn Answers is a very less used tool, I would say. It allows you to show off your knowledge. It allows you to brand yourself as an expert only if you can add that. So seek questions you want to get answers for. And here's a little trick. Ask questions also when you know the answer. And if nobody else can answer it, answer it yourself and see how people think of you as an expert in that space. Always think before you respond. Do not get into arguments. And only answer if you know the answer. There's nothing worse than being branded as somebody showing off or not having enough information on social media. LinkedIn applications, well it's right up there. Lots of applications that are available for us which we can put up on our page. Very useful for promotion. For instance, I use SlideShare to have a PowerPoint presentation of my company. And I also use a creative portfolio, the last one, to upload some pictures and images and a little bit about the work that we do. It's a great way of branding and it adds color. If you see, unlike a Facebook page, a LinkedIn profile is all black and white. So it's a great way to add color, great way to add, break the monotony. Keep updating it, make it exciting, and don't repeat too much. So that brings me almost to the close, and I think I'm closing up on time as well. So what are the things we should look at? Our profile should be 100% complete. Make sure that's very important. Make sure that you're using the relevant keywords. I would assume many of you guys out here know about search engine optimizations. 
So it's important that we come up in searches. Be active. Be responsive. If somebody sends you a mail, respond. If you don't even want to connect to somebody, turn down the requests. Don't talk too much about yourself. Nobody likes a braggart. Stay updated and keep updating. Goes, goes back to my point on posting updates. Use the tools, especially if you have a group. You get lots of analytics and you get lots of apps otherwise. Those tools are very powerful ways of branding and developing your business. And constantly review. You keep getting feedback. You will see how many people are visiting your page. That's a great way to see if you are relevant, if your name is coming up in searches, and if you are offering exciting content. But most importantly, folks, always, always remember, a tool can never replace a product. And this is just one more tool. Look outside the window. Other opportunities are also there. My point, LinkedIn is the only way that we will get our business. Thank you very much.